Kia ora and welcome back to Civ 5. Today I'm covering naval warfare and naval combat. Uh, I'll be focusing on the naval version of the game that came out after the Gods and Kings expansion. Uh, that expansion expanded naval combat from just melee units to uh, ranged units and a whole load of others. I'd also encourage you to pause the video uh, at this time and study this chart so that you can familiarize yourself with naval units. Alternatively, remember you can come back here any time to remind yourself of a naval unit. Uh, also, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be a part of this wider discussion and join Subscriber Warfare. But without any further ado, let's kick into it and discuss some civs you might want to play. Uh, Elizabeth is the obvious choice. Uh, England is a fantastic naval civ that provides just a generic plus two bonus to naval units. The ship of the line is also an incredibly powerful and agile unit, and I would say the best naval unit in the game. The Ottomans are another good choice. They provide reduced naval maintenance and an increased chance of stealing barbarian units when you defeat them. Uh, also, don't forget to leave a like or she'll, she'll get you. Let's talk specific naval units. Uh, if you go back to that chart at the beginning, you'll see there are quite a few. And I'd like to focus in on the specific ones that are really strong for combat. And I'm gonna start here with the privateer and just have a look down the bottom at the promotions that the privateer can get. Uh, it's got some incredible bonuses to raiding cities, stealing gold from the city owner, increased naval uh, combat damage, and crucially, this melee unit has the ability to steal enemy melee units when you defeat them. Uh, sorry, not just enemy melee units, but all enemy naval units when you defeat them in combat. That's incredibly important and that can completely turn a war when you start to steal the opponent's units. Um, I'm going to focus in here and, and show you how it works on a barbarian. Uh, but one other thing I would like to note, uh, for those of you who didn't study the chart at at the beginning, uh, early units can't enter deep ocean tiles. They can only sail through the shallows. That's why I'm specifically focusing, bam, here on the privateer and on other uh, more significant combat units that you get around the year 1500, 1600 in that sort of medieval, Renaissance medieval, uh, modern era, depending on how your technology is progressing. Now back to the privateer, you can see before I captured that melee unit, uh, the, sorry, I keep saying melee unit guys, what is with me today? Jeez, I need to get out onto the sea. Um, you can see I've just captured this barbarian unit and I'm just gonna camp there. The second unit I'd like to cover, it's another unique melee unit, is the submarine. Uh, the submarine comes a little later in the game and it is really unique because uh, essentially it's a glass cannon. So it can fire a ranged attack, just like I did there, across two tiles. And it's one of the only naval units that receives a 100% attack bonus against others. Most of them don't. Uh, unlike uh, land units, naval units struggle to get combat bonuses. There are no adjacency bonuses, really. So the, the submarine is very powerful. It also remains hidden. Unless you end a turn next to an enemy unit, uh, attack an enemy unit, or they have a special detector unit. Uh, and also, as you just saw, it can move under ice sheets so you can explore the world. Now, let's turn to Beijing and my fleet here. And I'll just go through these units because these are the other important ones that you'll need to have. Uh, so first off, the frigate. That's the main ranged unit. It can attack uh, naval vessels, but also land units. You'll see I've got two privateers and also two ironclads. Uh, the ironclad is like an upgraded privateer. Uh, it's much stronger. It requires iron, obviously, but it moves a little slower. Now watch this. I'm going to take you through how to capture a city. For starters, bring up your frigates and bombard the city, right? They have a two range, uh, a, a, yeah, a, a two tile range. So I'm just going to plink at Beijing here and you can see I've already taken it down to half health. Now I'm going to have a look through my melee units, uh, which are required obviously to capture a city, just like land units would be, and I'm just sort of checking their promotions, trying to see which one might net me the most gold, uh, because promotions are really important, uh, which brings me in just to a little side tip, make sure you build your harbours and other buildings that provide naval, naval bonuses, because naval units often don't have adjacency bonuses themselves, uh, you're going to need to 
promote them from the beginning to ensure you have the upper hand in naval combat. And now I'll just do a couple of things over here in my city and let's go back and take Beijing on, I crap you not, the second turn. So I'm going to bombard it again with just two frigates. It's not even a great investment. And then I'm going to sail my melee naval unit, my ironclad in, and absolutely decimate Beijing. Uh, although actually, as I you know sort of look at these promotions, and uh, I don't quite have the movement on this ironclad, so instead, let's send perhaps this one uh, into capture at the city. Bam! Just like that. We pillaged 153 gold, and we annexed the city. And that's on top of the gold that our uh, privateer, which unfortunately died, stole last turn, which was 27. So we netted uh, almost 200 gold out of capturing this city. And it only took us two turns. And that, my friends, is the true power of naval combat and survive. And if you have a look around this map, look at this. Berlin, another capital city, completely exposed. In fact, more exposed. You could pull five or six uh, frigates up, bombard any land units or the city, right? Because a gentle reminder, frigates can bombard both. And then you could have a line of melee naval units as well, your ironclads or your privateers. I mean, it's incredible. And look, so many coastal cities. Guangzhou, a little more difficult. Uh, Beijing was slightly difficult, but the rest of these are so exposed. It is just absolutely ridiculous how strong naval warfare is in this game. And that is why I wanted to make the third and final Combat Basics tutorial on naval warfare because it's incredibly strong, it's incredibly powerful, and if you're playing single player, the AI will often neglect it, right? Beijing wasn't in a great position there, that they were clearly a weak target. Uh, I, I, make no, um, I make no secret of that. But you have to admit, uh, it, it, that was so easy. The open seas are so easy to maneuver through, unlike land where you have to deal with terrain and hills and units to move past and enemy cities blocking your way. If you're on a map that has even a little bit of open ocean, you can just sail through, moving directly across, not being inhibited at all. So I can't stress it enough. I'll stop rambling about it, but I really can't stress enough just how powerful naval combat is, particularly as you move later into the game. And, and um, I'll just cover a couple of late game things that you might want to know as well. Um, the only other two main types of unit that I haven't covered are the carriers, which you'll want to build in the later game. You can store two to five aircraft on them, which makes them incredibly strong. Uh, and also um, missile carriers can carry missiles. And finally, the missile cruiser and the nuclear submarine can uh, also carry missiles. And of course, crucially, they can carry nukes. So you can transport nukes across the sea and deal some real damage. Hey, that's all from me today in the third and final part of my basic combat tutorials. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And if you'd like to be part of our small but rapidly growing community, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to smash a like to push the video through the YouTube algorithm. Thanks so much for watching. And if you have any tips or tricks or anything I missed or anything you'd like to see next time, leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you then. Thanks, everybody.